This is the Fizz Keeper. It was invented in 1926 and started being sold in stores around 1988. It's made to keep soft drinks from going flat. Okay, so let me show you how this works. You open your soda to get a drink. Let's out all the pressure that was built up in there. It's around three atmospheres of pressure. And then when you close it up, you put it back on and pump up the pressure. So it's pretty loose right now, but I just give it some pumps. So the theory is that this increase of pressure will keep the CO2 locked in the liquid. It's getting solid. Now we pump it up to the same pressure as before, so why would it go flat now? Now here's where the controversy starts. Anyone who's had a background of science will tell you that this will not stop your soda from going flat. But anyone who's actually used one might tell you that yeah, it actually does kind of work. Kind of for a little while. So now it's at a really high pressure, around three atmospheres of pressure again. So why do some people say it works while others will say it's a bogus tool scamming people since 1926? Well, any good chemist or physicist should be able to tell you that this won't work due to something called Henry's Law. Henry's Law tells us that the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure above the liquid. Now partial pressure just means the percentage of the gas pressure that's made up of the molecule you're interested in. So for regular air, the partial pressure of CO2 is about 0.0004 atmospheres because CO2 makes up around 0.04% of the one atmosphere of air around us. On the other hand, in this soda bottle, the partial pressure of CO2 is about three atmospheres. So when I open the bottle, I release the pressure. So now the liquid contains more CO2 than it can hold. It's super saturated with CO2. So the CO2 bubbles out and it'll keep bubbling out until the partial pressure in the gas phase equals the Henry's Law constant times the concentration of CO2 in the liquid. So that's why if you leave a soda bottle open, it'll just go flat because it keeps trying to repressurize the gas space above it. But if you close the lid, it'll start repressurizing that gas phase again. But that repressurized gas came from the CO2 that was in the liquid itself. So overall, the whole thing became less carbonated. But now let's try with the fizz keeper. So the same thing happens when we open it, the pressure drops and disturbs the equilibrium. But now we pump the bottle full of three atmospheres of air. But the partial pressure in the gas is still almost zero. So just like the case where we didn't even pressurize it, the liquid is still super saturated. And it will still start to lose CO2 and put CO2 in the gas phase until the partial pressure in the gas equals the Henry's Law constant times the concentration in the liquid again. So in the end, we lose about the same amount of CO2 from our liquid trying to repressurize the partial pressure of CO2 in that gas phase above it. So now we know what Henry's Law says, but let's actually test it and see what happens. Okay, to test this, I have two two liter bottles of Sprite. And I'm gonna open one of them the normal way without repressurization, and in the other one, I'll use the Fizz Keeper. And the way I'm gonna be measuring the fizziness of them is I'm gonna measure the pH. The more CO2 that's dissolved in the liquid, the more carbonic acid it makes, so it should change the pH. So we'll measure the pH in both of them to tell which one's more fizzy. So to start off, I've emptied half of the liquid from each of these. And I pumped this one up as much as I could. And this one, I've just put the lid back on it. Okay, let's test it out now. It's been about 20 minutes. They've both just been sitting here. Definitely some more pressure there. Okay, first we'll do the fizz taste test. So these are very close to each other in the taste test. If anything, I would say this one is a little bit more carbonated though. Test the pH. 3.4, 3.4. So they're about the same. There's not a huge difference between them. I probably wouldn't be able to pick them out in a blind test but I would say this one is a little bit more carbonated. So it does seem like this preserved the fizz a little bit. So this is weird. Henry's law told us that it shouldn't matter whether or not we fill the headspace with pressurized air, but somehow it seems like it preserved the fizz a little bit. Why is that? Well, the reason is because Henry's law is an equation that's based on equilibrium, meaning that this will be the final state of everything after a long time has passed. 
But what about in a short amount of time? When we pressurize the bottle, it actually makes the diffusion rate for CO2 in the gas decrease. So the rate at which we lose CO2 from the liquid decreases as well. So your soda loses the same amount of CO2 in the long run, it just happens slower. So for a few hours it seems to work well, but if you repressurize your soda and let it sit overnight, it won't make a difference. So it changes the kinetics, but not the equilibrium. So now what about if I open it and then wait for it to get to equilibrium again? Well, that would mean the pressure is going to actually rise above the pressure that it is to begin with. So in this case, I waited longer and I also shook them up to increase the speed that it got to equilibrium. So if I shake them, what it's actually doing is increasing the speed at which it gets to equilibrium so I don't have to wait as long. So it's the equivalent of about letting it sit till the next day. Okay, now let's pour some more. Holy cow! <laughs> okay, that was crazy. So that had a lot of pressure in there. <laughs> so the pressure actually increased more than the initial pressure of a two liter bottle because it had to put CO2 back up to the partial pressure it needed to be at to be at equilibrium with the liquid in here. So that means it went above the initial pressure. That almost blew my hand off. Now let's try this one. Definitely not as much pressure. That literally hurt my hand. It pushed my hand up like that. So after this, I think I can make a great spokesman for FizzKeeper. FizzKeeper, it works great for a little bit, kind of. And also, it could blow your hand off. Holy cow! And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you're notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.